many of you have played Monopoly? What's a really good role in Monopoly to get sometimes? Cat's eyes. Snake eyes? Is a good role? Yeah. Well, it's a good role. <laughs> a 10, like a 5 and a 5, that would be a good role. If you get doubles in Monopoly, you get to go again, right? So sometimes when I play Monopoly, I always wonder, you know, what are the chances of me getting a 10? So what you're going to do with your group members is you're going to use experimental probability to calculate exactly your situation with your dice right here. What are, what is the probability of getting doubles? Now, what I'd like to do is, how many groups do we have? One, two, three, four. I'd like to get a hundred rolls in all together. So I think we're going to do, you guys do 25 rolls, you do 25, you do 25, you do 25. When we're all done, we'll compile our results and we'll see what our experimental probability is. I'm going to give you a sheet, if everybody can look up here for just a second. The only section I want you to worry about is this top section where you're just going to write down the results of your goals. The only thing you have to note is, did I get doubles or did I not get doubles? You don't have to write every different combination of roll because what are we counting? Doubles. So we're only concerned, is it doubles or is it not doubles? Is that clear? Any questions before we start? You get your paper, choose somebody to roll, and choose somebody to record results. I'll give you a couple minutes to get 25 rolls. Everybody has their results, so I'm going to put doubles. And I'm going to put not doubles. Uh, Scott and Andy, what were your results? We had three doubles, 22. Okay, 22 not? Yeah, yeah that would add up. The same thing. Other times, you don't get consistent results. 
what's good about doing this experiment 100 times instead of, say, 10 times? What's better about doing it more, having more trials? Why would that be a good thing, or is it a good thing? Probably the more times you do it, the more accurate it will be. Anybody else agree with that? That's the other I think that's very true. Imagine all the trials didn't exist except this one. We would assume that you only get one doubles every 25 rolls. Or if only this one existed, we would say you get five out of 20. That's a big difference. So the more you do it, it kind of smooths out those large fluctuations, which is a good thing. Um, so on to the business of calculating the probability. How are we going to do that? Let's think. Let's look at our data and let's think. What do we need to do to make a proper ratio for all of our results? Do we have an idea? What do we do first? Yeah, I think we need to do some adding. We need to do some adding. What should we add? We could add all the doubles together and add all the non-doubles together. That seems like a good idea. Total everything up. Um, those of you with big brains or quick fingers, how to use your calculator. And Somebody give me the total doubles we have up here. Twelve. Twelve. I'm gonna use red just because it'll stick out a little bit. So we have twelve rolls of doubles, and how many not doubles? Eight. Yep. Now it's almost irrelevant. It's almost irrelevant what we got for not doubles, except for the fact we need to know our total rolls. How would we turn twelve doubles? and 88 not doubles into a ratio of experimental probability. 12 over 100. Let's see if he's right. He said it's 12 over 100. What was the number of times the event, the doubles, was rolled? 12, I agree. How many total number of trials did we have? 100, good. We have an accurate ratio of experimental probability. Can anyone turn that ratio into a percent? Or tell me how to turn that ratio into a percent? We got Good. 12 divided by 100? And multiply that by 100. That will give us a percent. What is that? It's pretty easy when the denominator is. 100 because, of course, a percent just means how many times out of 100. Um, any questions on this? We're going to do one more um, experiment. This one involves a deck of cards. Now, you're the poker player, right, Scott? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many of you have ever played, say, Texas Hold'em poker? Sarah, when you deal the cards around the table, how many cards does each person get? Five, three, four, two. two. Oh, two, then you have five on the, you put right. it in the middle. So you'll get two cards in your hand. The question we're going to answer next, what happened to all my markers? Did I move this one? I did. The question we're going to ask next is, what is the experimental probability In your group, you can choose 
how many hands do you want to deal? Maybe your group wants to deal 10 hands around the table. Do it all at once. Or deal five, five deal like this. But do it just like I did it here. If everybody could look to the front of the room for just a moment. Deal the cards out in front of you all at the same time. Okay. should deal 25 hands. So go ahead and... Ten is fine. You can pick them all. Do somewhere between five and ten. Because you won't have enough cards to do much more than that. Okay. So. If anybody needs help dealing the cards, I'm happy to help you. If you're not familiar with how. Yes, if you get a for your percent, you can. Run. 